a 53-year-old American decided to help a homeless man who was begging on the street and her heart fluttered when she realized that it was her son that she had abandoned when she had an accident. Upon approaching him his shocking reaction surprised everyone. Seeing her beloved son all dirty, hungry and begging on that corner made her heart break. After so long, Mary no longer had hopes of finding her lost son, the same son who turned his back when she needed it most when she was paralyzed. Mary's day had been long and exhausting, and she couldn't wait any longer for the time when she would finally get home to rest. It was a rainy day, she felt lucky when the water finally stopped falling right at the time she left a hotel far from her house, she was there delivering an order of cakes that she and a partner friend produced in your modest shop. After unloading them Mary was hungry noticed a hot dog stand on the corner and decided to have a quick snack, while eating, she noticed a young homeless man sitting across the street shivering with cold. She looked at her small alms bowl in front of her. His body was thin and he didn't seem to eat Dias. Mary went up to him and asked if he wanted a hot dog too. That's when she approached the beggar and felt a shiver run down her spine. Mary was paralyzed and her face impassive. It was as if she was seeing a ghost and in a way she was. Son are you? She questioned the beggar and staring seriously. Despite the long period they were apart Mary would never forget her son's face. The beggar lowered his head trying to avoid the exchange of looks, shame took over him. When he realized that he was standing before his mother, whom he had abandoned just when she depended on his care, how could Brandon look into his mother's eyes again, how could he ask forgiveness for everything he had done? and how could he forget that terrible night four years ago ago when he was informed of his mother's accident, an accident that would change his family's lives forever. It was a cold November night before Thanksgiving, the snow was falling slowly but steadily, 21 years old at the time, he was having fun at a party with friends he was laughing out loud, drank and flirted with girls on the dance floor. While celebrating coming of age, suddenly his cell phone started ringing. Realizing that he didn't know the number Brendan decided to ignore the call, he was too busy trying to enjoy the party to the fullest, however his phone kept vibrating, and this made Brandon more and more irritated, until here he finally decided to answer the call. Connection Who are you and why do you call me? Brandon asked almost shouting as he answered the phone. It's me Hannah said the voice on the other end of the line. Hannah, whose number is this? What happened to your phone? Brendan asked his little sister my battery ran out, but that doesn't matter Brendan. Something's happened to mom, Anna replied in a shaky voice. She suffered an accident, Brandon's heart stopped when he heard this, he went outside the club to speak. What? What happened? Was it serious? She is fine? He choked on speaking, he was just imagining a million things that could have happened. Anna explained that their mother planned to make a special Thanksgiving dinner. After all soon they would be distant because of college and fulfilling their dreams, so she and Hannah went to the supermarket together near her house. On the way a car braked sharply to avoid colliding with a cyclist, and skidded on the frozen asphalt, she managed to swerve of the bike but unfortunately ended up hitting Mary on the sidewalk who didn't even have time to react. We were side by side but nothing happened to me, mom is fine now, but we are still in the hospital. Would you please come over here, I don't quite know what to do right now. Then he realized by his sister's voice that the accident was serious, but hearing that his mother was fine made him calmer. He promised his sister that he would go find them as soon as possible, as soon as he finished helping a friend with his move. Three hours later, Brandon finally decided to go to the hospital. As soon as he met his sister in the hospital hallway, he could see in her eyes that she wasn't happy to see him. What took you so long? I've been trying to reach you for over three hours. 
Anna asked, trying to remain calm. John just moved into a new house, I was helping him. Answered the young man, slurring his words. Do you think I'm some idiot Brandon? You're drunk again and I could hear the whole party in the background as we talked on the phone. Now get your strength together and pull yourself together to play the big brother role because mommy needs you. Anna finally said with irritation in her voice. His head already lightheaded from too much booze Brandon replied, Oh, now I'm important, suddenly you realize I'm your big brother the son who should have gotten all of mommy's love and attention. He continued, since you're her favorite daughter who always comes first, why should I waste my time coming back early? I had more important things to do. That's when Hannah exploded, mom got hit by a car and almost died, she's in ICU now, but you know what, go back to your parasite friends you're nothing but a useless loser with no future. Hannah's words made Brandon startle, and they hit him like a punch in the gut. It offended him so much that he turned and walked away I'm leaving, don't expect my help for anything else. Brandon's blood boiled with rage and he couldn't shake the feeling that his younger sister had raised her voice against him. Meanwhile Mary was lying in the hospital bed exhausted after several surgeries thinking about what the future had in store for her. Now the worst was not the hospital bills that arrived if necessary, she would sell her small bakery business to pay off the debts, which was worrying inside Mary was to see her two beloved children being separated. And then she had overheard the whole argument between Hannah and Brendan. After the death of her husband, Mary found herself with the responsibility of raising two children on her own, but Mary knew she had to face life head on. And she swallowed back tears and with Hannah's support remained a warrior throughout her hospitalization and recovery. Not even when she learned that she would need long sessions of physical therapy to walk again did the woman let herself be shaken. Hannah frequently skipped classes at the college to stay by her mother's side and make sure she was okay and Brandon was almost never at home he was more interested in spending time with his friends drinking and gambling and partying all the time. Brandeo did not show the slightest interest in knowing about his mother's health, who was still paralyzed from the waist down. With everything there was a day when Brandon was forced to stay home and take care of his mother. Anna had an important interview to enter a renowned college and therefore it was up to Brandon to help in the care of his mother, little did they know, but this day was decisive for the entire future of the family. Right after breakfast Mary called Brandon, Honey, I need a favor, her sister forgot to buy my meds would you please run to the pharmacy, I need to take these pills before lunch. Brandon was very irritable whenever she called for help whether it was bringing her a glass of water or taking her to the bathroom, Mary saw a look of impatience and frustration on Brandon's face and she was devastated by it. She was always busy playing video games. He replied in a boring way that's okay, I will, but I won't buy it with my money, who will pay for the medicine? Take some of the money that's in the safe in the closet, here's the key, don't forget to take the prescription with you, said Mary handing over a small silver key with the prescription and the money. Brandon left the house, only returning many hours after lunch. As soon as Brandon arrived, his mother called to talk. I'm sorry to burden you, she said, but you know how important these drugs are to me. Why did you take so long? Is this serious, Mom? I'll do you a favor and you're still complaining. It's okay to take the medicine a little late, go ahead and take it, he said, handing the bag to his mother. I never imagined being treated like this by you son, I don't know what I did to you and her holding back tears. I can refresh your memory, so remember when you abandoned me with grandma a few years ago, you think I don't remember that, Brandon yelled. Mary felt the weight of the past on her heart. When Mary's husband passed away, Hannah was just a newborn. 
so she left her oldest son Brendan with his grandmother and took Hannah with her to work because she was still very young and needed more attention and care, but Brendan who was still very young didn't understand the nuances of life. He understood this attitude of Mary as if he had less value, he was jealous of his younger sister and could not help fighting with her, as he grew up. In addition, he always saw his younger sister as Mary's favorite daughter. Over time, this generated a lot of resentment in Brandon towards his mother. I didn't abandon you, Mary said. Her voice was barely a whisper as she held back her emotions. I've worked hard day and night to feed this family and not let you two lack for anything. Then she looked into Brandon's eyes waiting for an answer to soothe his soul. His response was nothing like she'd imagined. Well if you think so, so be it. When does your favorite daughter come home? I have something important coming soon and I need to get out. Brandon didn't even wait for his mom to answer and left her room without looking her in the eye. If only poor Mary had known that this would be the last time she would see Brandon, she would have screamed and begged him to stay. That same night, Hannah returned home to find her mother fast asleep. Hannah couldn't believe that her own brother would do something so terrible, so she called Brandon immediately, but no one answered, and after several tries Brandon's phone was disconnected. Hannah's heart shuddered when she realized that her brother had stolen all of her mother's money and disappeared without a trace. Mom wake up Brennan disappeared and took all our money Anna said while waking Mary gently, I'm calling the police but to her surprise her mother stopped her begging her not to do this. That was the first time Mary had cried in front of one of her children she felt guilty for raising such an irresponsible son like Brandon, but she still loved him and couldn't imagine him being handcuffed and put behind bars life went on its flow and four years have passed since the day Brandon disappeared there hasn't been a single day that Mary hasn't prayed begging God to bring him back. During that time Mary put her broken pieces together and sold her company using the money to finally pay off the hospital debt she had contracted she was already walking again, but still in pain and some difficulty. I went to my friends and girlfriends for help, but when they found out I was sick they treated me like I was a freak I didn't know if you or Hannah would still forgive me, I didn't know if my family would take me back sick since I didn't take you in. I knew I had screwed up and I felt so guilty that I decided never to see you guys again. Mary struggled not to fall to her knees then and there. Life has already given you a lot of pain and suffering come on. Mom are you serious, are you taking me home? With you can, after all I've done. Yes, you are still my son, how can I leave you on the street like this? Tears of happiness appeared on Brandan's face and his heart was pounding as he got into the taxi with his mother. He could not wait to see his little sister believing that she did too would welcome him warmly. However, what Brandon saw was another reaction from Hannah. When the young woman saw her brother dirty like that, she was startled, but she recovered and became furious. Mother you forgot, he stole you and disappeared, in your most difficult moment. I wouldn't have gone to college because of him. I won't forgive him, he won't stay with us. Hannah expressed her disappointment to Mary torn between Hannah's anger and Brandon's helplessness. Mary gave Brandon some money and told him to rent a room at a nearby hotel. She needed a little time to convince Hannah and she needed to make sure Breno didn't have a decent place to stay. Are you going to give all that money to him? Wait and see. He'll spend it all on booze, and soon he'll be back begging on the streets of Novo, Hannah said in a rage. The next day when Mary went to visit Brandon at the hotel she found he was never there Brandon was gone again, the days turned into weeks Mary never heard from Brenda again, she searched the distant neighborhood again but to no avail. Mary was disappointed and doubted that she had done the right thing in forgiving Brandon and giving him money. During the physiotherapy sessions, Mary met Johan another patient and they soon became friends. Johan and Mary realized that they had many things in common including a passion for making sweets and cakes. Thanks to a lawyer recommended by Johan four years after the accident, 
Mary was able to win a good compensation from the insurance and was finally able to put her life on track following her treatment and even pay for Hannah's first year of college. With the passing of weeks Mary decided to return to her old bake sale business and invited Johan to be her partner, it didn't take long for their bakery to start receiving orders from all over the city everything seemed normal, except for the fact that Mary never stopped to think about Brendan, little did she know that someone heard her prayers and that life had prepared a surprise for her on that rainy day. I know it is you couldn't help but feel an agony in her chest when she realized that the homeless man begging for alms was in fact her son Brandon. As the homeless got up to leave Mary held him and said, Wait Brandon please stop, yes mom it's me replied Brandon with his voice choking with emotion he seemed to have waited for that moment to finally be able to cry. I don't deserve to even look at you, please go away, don't come near me, no, I'm not leaving without you, I didn't look for you everywhere to let you go now. What happened my son? I asked all her friends, but no one knew where she was Mary was determined not to lose her son again, but she needed to know what happened to him all these years. She asked again about how he ended up there in the gutter crying Brandon confessed I didn't want to spend my youth looking after you. I had just turned 21 and I just wanted to be free, when I saw all that money I didn't think twice and run away, at first the parties were fun, but during one of them I passed out drunk and when I woke up I was in a hospital with a doctor looking at me with a serious look, there I knew that my life was not would it be more the same brand and cause trying to hold. Back the tears, what happened? What did the doctor tell you Mary asked worriedly. It's over mom I have cancer I won't live much longer, as if the world stopped around Mary after she heard her son's last words. Almost a year after that night of reunion, a letter reached her. It was a simple envelope whose letter inside was written in a shaky handwriting. It was a letter addressed to her and Hannah signed by Brendan. In those fine print Brandon asked for one last meeting with his family, he wanted one last chance to say goodbye and ask for forgiveness, finally discovering that he was sick Hannah agreed to accompany her mother since she said that that could be the last time I would see him live. When they arrived at the indicated address they realized that it was a restaurant and not a hospital as Mary had imagined when they got out of the taxi too were approached by a polite waiter who took them to a reserved table where Brandon was waiting for them dressed in a simple but elegant suit black. Excuse all the mystery, but I wanted to surprise you. I hope you like it, Brendan said with a long smile on his face. Mary was stunned by her son's words and could not believe what she saw before her eyes. Brandon, he was less thin and pale and not at all reminiscent of that beggar he had met months ago. Brandon continued saying happy birthday mom may you live long and may you receive many blessings. May that smile on your face never fade and may God bless me with another chance to be your child again. Not knowing how to react correctly the two women sat down at the table followed by Brandon who then revealed the whole truth. Brendan says everything changed for him the night he was rejected by Hannah and he realized he needed to deserve to be back in their lives. He said that he spent that night in a shelter for the homeless and the next day he used the money to buy some decent clothes and cut his hair and decided to look for a decent job with the help of a man he met on the streets. He had got a job as a telephone operator and luckily he wasn't turned down because of his health problems the salary was low but he didn't need much anymore. He saved some salary money and organized that birthday dinner for his mother. I don't know how much time I have left, but I want to spend all the time I have with you before God calls me, and until then I'll pay back all the money I've taken from you, Brendan said. Mary and Hannah were moved to tears there was still so much pain and disappointment in their story, but deep in their hearts they knew they had found the path to redemption and reconciliation. If you liked the story, Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Until the next video.